Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin ve salatu ala khatemil enbiyai vel mursalin nebiyyina Muhammed ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in amma ba'd. İnşallah Teala today I want to share with you a kıssa acibe, azime, a very powerful story, a very yani great story. It's a story that has in it ibar ve ıza. It has lessons in it great benefits. It's the story of a woman min ahli jannah from the women of Jannah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us in a hadith of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated fi sahihayhima in a sahih book an ata ibn uh, uh, an ata ibn abi rabah قال he said قال لابن عباس ابن عباس said to this, his students one day عطاء بن أبي رباح is mentioning that uh, عبد الله بن عباس was one day sitting with his students and as he was sitting with his students <coughs> he said to them ألا أريك امرأة من أهل الجنة shall I not show you guys a woman from the women of Jannah Ata said, Qultu, I said, Bala, of course, I want to see who this woman is. Then Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he said, Hadihi al-mara'atu sawda, that black woman over there. Atati al-nabiyya, this woman came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she said, Inni usra'u, I become unconscious. I lose my uh, consciousness. Okay? And وَإِنِّي أَتَكَشَّفْ And also, when that happens to me, I become unveiled. يعني I become unveiled. My aura shows. My private parts would show. فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ لِي Supplicate for me, O Messenger of Allah. Beg Allah for me. The Prophet said to her, إِنْ شِئْتِ صَبَرْتِ وَلَكِ الْجَنَّةِ If you want... You can show patience and you're going to be from the people of Jannah. وَإِنْ شِئْتِ And if you wish, دَعَوْتُ اللَّهَ I'm going to beg Allah. And you عَافِيَكِ That Allah cures you from this. فَقَالَتْ She said, أَصْبِرُوا I will show patience. I will be patient. Then after that she said, إِنِّي أَتَكَشَّفُ أَنْ إِنِّي أَتَكَشَّفُ فَادْعُوا اللَّهَ لِي أَنْ لَا أَتَكَشَّفُ she said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, my aura shows like it. That one, I want you to supplicate for me. I want you to ask Allah that my aura doesn't show. As for me losing my consciousness, I will choose Jannah. I'll, re- I'll let it remain for me, but I'll choose Jannah. فَدَعَى لَهَا The Prophet, he made supplication for her, he begged Allah, and from that day onwards, her aura never showed. Brothers and sisters, this story of this woman really shows a woman who has iman and the sidq. She had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she was truthful. Her heart was pure. She had deen and haya. She had shyness and she had religion. With this great calamity that befell her and this harm that has come her way, it still didn't shake her religion. It caused her pain, it caused her physical harm, but it didn't go towards her religion. She came to the Prophet ﷺ, asking the Prophet ﷺ to supplicate for her so Allah can remove this from her, so Allah can remove it from her, this pain and this that she's having. And the Messenger ﷺ, he gave her an other, another alternative. He said to her, what about patience? And without hesitation, she chose patience. She chose husnul aqibah. She chose the best of endings. She chose jameel al-ma'al. She chose the beautiful ending. Radiyallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah be pleased with her. Patience. And that meant for the rest of her life until she lives on this earth, this illness will remain with her. 
and it won't go from her. But with that, her aura used to show before the Prophet supplicated for her. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I can be patient from my illness, but I can never be patient from my aura showing. That I need dua for. That I want Allah to remove from me. Yani her iman and her faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not in any way, shape or form accept for her aura to show. Keep it in mind, brothers and sisters, that she's unconscious. So if her aura shows, there's nothing upon her. There's no harm upon her. But she didn't want her aura to show. So that's why she said, Inni atakashafu. O Messenger of Allah, my aura shows. That's something I can't be patient with, O Messenger of Allah. I want Allah to remove that from me. The hadith mentions the Prophet made dua for her and from that day onwards, her aura wouldn't show. Let's think here, brothers and sisters. Our sisters who consciously, consciously choose to take off, her, take off their hijab. This woman wasn't conscious when her aura would show. And our sisters, Walil Asaf al Shadeed, they consciously, consciously take off their hijab and they flaunt their beauty out in the open. They plaster it over social media. Look at the difference between these two. This is the sir, this is the secret of why this woman earned a place in Jannah. Her heart, look how powerful it is. Oh sisters, why would you consciously choose to bring out yourself in public? Brothers and sisters, at those days, if someone saw your aura and you covered yourself, you're not, you're seen after that. But these pictures of yours, my sister, that you put on social media, if tomorrow you start to practice your deen, hold on to your religion, become an imra saliha, become a mother of your children, those pictures that you've taken and those videos that you did, they won't go. They won't go. They will always there, they will always be there. I remember a situation of a sister who got, wanted to get married and her and the brother and everything between the family was good until a picture of her resurfaced. It was seen on social media. She deleted the account. She deleted the pictures and everything. But this picture was out there. Okay? And it came up. And not only did it destroy everything for her, but it destroyed the way her family saw her and the way everything was. Brothers and sisters, we need to really look at what we're putting online and the pictures that we're putting on. The harm is going to be forever. And that's the truth. A lot of us actually believe you can delete things online. You can't. It's always easy to be retrieved. There's one way or another you can manipulate things. It's visible. It can be what you take on those cameras, brothers and sisters, it's there. It just takes a smart person to bring it back out. This woman, brothers and sisters, she never lost the conscious Iman that she had. These sisters who are doing this, who are putting themselves on social media, who are following their desires, they are unconscious. They do faint. But it's not their consciousness of the mind and the brain, but it's the consciousness of their desires. Their desires has made them faint. Taken all power over them. And so they've become vulnerable. Their Iman is so weak. Their religion is so weak. Shyness has gone. Haya has gone. What you see taking place on social media, our young sisters, the things that they're up to, breaks the heart. Wallahi, it breaks the heart. You're harming yourself, my sister. You're harming the legacy of your family and your father and your mother. A lot of you guys, your parents are good people. 
the righteous people. Your father's going out there making the bread, yani bringing provision for you. Your mother likewise is running around, she's working for you, trying to provide and take care of you. They've bought everything for you in this world that you, they, you, that you wanted. They've given you everything. They raised you from the ground that you stand on. That height and that strength that you have, they put effort and hard work into you. And then what you did is, you went behind their back and you posted yourself for other, the other genders, men and women, to look at your aura. This woman, my brothers and sisters, her desires was under control. Even though she lost consciousness, she was conscious about her desires. She didn't want people to see her. Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, in his great kitab Zad al-Ma'ad, he talks about a, the, the, the type of يعني, as-sara' that we see a lot, of people who become unconscious. And he talks about what is the reason for it and what brings about it. He says, وَأَكْثَرُ تَسَلُّطِ الْأَرْوَاحِ الْخَبِيثَ عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ تَكُونُ مِنْ جِهَةِ قِلَّةِ دِينِهِمْ وَخَرَابِ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَأَلْسِنَةِ مِنْ حَقَائِقِ الذِّكْرِ وَالتَّعَاوِيضِ وَالتَّحَسُّنَاتِ النَّبَوِيَّةِ وَالْإِيمَانِيَّةِ He says, many of the people who get afflicted, afflicted with these illnesses, these bad souls, is because of their weak religion. Ponder here, a lot of the youths who are online are actually suffering from depression, anxiety. They are also suffering from yani, jinn possession. Why? What's the reason? It's because qillati deenihim. The religion is very weak. The sister, she puts herself online with her aura showing. وَخَرَابِ قُلُوبِهِمْ The corruption of their hearts. وَأَلْسِنَةِ in their tongue. You see a young girl, the way she talks, the vulgar words that come out of their mouth. Some of them are singing a song. The lyrics in that song is so bad, but they're saying it with their tongues. They're mimicking, they're impersonating the rap. They are far from dhikr. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanallah al azim. والتعاويذ سين أعوذ بالله والتحصنات النبوية the fortresses the prophetic fortresses that would protect you from all of the shayatir they they are far from all of that والإيمانية they are far from all of that فتلقى الروح الخبيثة so what happens is this evil spirit this evil soul comes to your way الرجل أعزل لا سلاح معه and you have no weapon imagine someone attacks you and you have no weapon that's the situation of many of these youngsters and these youths online who are plastering their photos and yani it's the sister, she's making herself look excessively beautiful. How many people are looking at her face? How many people are looking at her body? How many people are jealous? You know, how many people are sick and ill, don't have that beauty? How many, how many people are looking for height and you have height, for example? How many people are looking for your, your weight that don't have it? How many people are looking at your complexion, they don't have it. How many people are looking for your age, they don't have it? All of that. There are people who are lower than you in many things. They don't have it. You've put yourself out there. The person who's sick, who doesn't have anything, who's lacking everything in life, looks at you and gives you evil eye. And subhanAllah, a lot of us, a lot of us are not just plastering our beauties online, but what we're putting online is actually what we're really not. So we're giving a false impression. We're pretending like this is the car we drive. We are pretending this is the clothing that we wear. We're pretending that we really look like this every single day. How many shots did that video take before you released it as a final version? You took out all the mistakes, right? You took out all the angles where that picture showed a, yani, something that you didn't want us to see. But you're giving a false impression to uh, the youngsters and the, uh, the upcoming generation, giving them 
if you want يعني, people to love, you have to be perfect. And so the young girl at the age of 12 and 13, she's depressed. Why? Because she's gained weight. What's the, what's the problem if she's gained weight? That's Jamal. Some, يعني, it's variety. Somebody else might love you for that. She's made to feel, no, it's not good. You've gained weight. You're, you're, you're not looking good. Ha, you have to look like so-and-so. And your body has to be like so-and-so's body. Or your height has to be like so-and-so's height. Or your color, your complexion has to be exactly like so-and-so. Or the length of your hair has to be like so-and-so. Yani, why? Why? Why can't my short hair be good? Why can't my height be good? Yani, why can't yani, my complexion not be good? Why did Allah create us in these different varieties? Because someone might like to marry a Chinese. Someone might like to marry an African. Someone might like to marry an Asian. Somebody might like to marry a European. Somebody might like to... All of these are just different varieties. Somebody might like يعني, having this wife from this particular area. That doesn't mean the other area is bad. No, it's not. But it's just another person likes it. يعني, we've become... يعني, this is the standard. Who are you? To, who sets the standard for what's beauty and what is not? يعني, that's the sad part. And the people who are setting the standard of what beauty is are a group of people who make money from you. They get these cosmetics, the makeup and everything. They make it look like this is how you should look like. Our sisters are running, packing their bags, getting money from their husbands and their boyfriend, haram relationships they're in, or their parents. And they run and they go and they get this uh, makeup. Why? Because every single person is wearing it. And if I don't wear it, I'm going to look very bad. Subhanallah. I have seen 14-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 12-year-olds, who when you ask them what is beauty, their definition of beauty is set by يعني, a cartoon they've watched. I remember one time, I saw a family member, their parent bought the, ch the daughter a doll. And said to her, this is, this is princess, uh, this is the princess and this is the doll, wear it. I mean, have it, it's your toy, play with it. The, girl said, the young girl said, no, I don't like this. Why? Her hair's too short. I mean, her hair is this color. I mean, her compl yani. she so the mother said, why can't she be a princess with this hair color? No, she can't. A princess has to have this type of color. Yani, do you understand my point? The point is for a very young age, the child is being taught what is it that he or she should look like. Yani, this is a problem, Allah. It's a big problem. And that's why a lot of these youngsters, they can't keep up with this. So they get depressed. The girl is told, you need to lose weight. Who said she has to lose weight? So she's depressed. Okay, she's what? She's depressed. She's told her color is a bit too dark. It's problematic. So she has to go and make herself light. Who said that's a problem? Why do you think it's a problem? It's not a problem. Another one, she's like, my, my skin is too pale. So I have to tan my skin. Who said it's a problem? Why is it? That's not a problem. It's what Allah gave you. Be pleased and happy with it. So each person has been told to move from their position. And then they're told, this is the standard everyone needs to work towards. And money is going towards these people. They're making money. Okay, good, good, good, good, good. But guess what? They make money from you. You lose your soul, your life, your heart, your mind, your thought process. You lose everything. So this is what happens. And so this person, his whole goal in life is not the remembrance of Allah, the adhkar and the dhikr and this and that. It's not. It's not. It's not. So this person starts to become focused in that. And a lot of us parents, we fall guilty for this. We compare our children, for example. We will say, oh, your sister's got longer hair than you to our daughters, for example. Or your hair is not as soft as Fulana's hair. Or you don't have a lot of hair as Fulana does. And so then the girl grows up feeling a certain way. No. This is how Allah created you. Allah's creation is perfection. 
build, give that your child. Billahi alaikum parents. Give your child confidence in the way Allah created them. Make them feel happy. Confidence enough that when they grow up, they don't care what people have to say. It doesn't bother them. And I used to always think, brothers and sisters, honestly, I used to think what these topics I'm talking about now, a few years back I would never have spoken about these topics. I would always think this is unnecessary. It's a group of people who are confused. Who, who... But I'm seeing it's become rampant, the depression level that youngsters are going through basically because of how they look. Just how they look. And it's saddening them. And wallahi wa billahi wa tallahi, that young girl is so, so beautiful. Allah has created her beautifully. But no, however much you talk to her, it doesn't matter because social media has already got to her head. It's told her the way that she has to be. Look, I, I, and all of us, we see it. We go to a, uh, uh, a weighing machine. And the weighing machine will tell us this is how much your weight should be if you're this height. يعني, this is just health reasons, no problem. But if it's beauty, beauty, no, it's not. Beauty is not determined by one or two or four or five or hundred people. Because again, beauty is subjective, it's not an objective thing. There's someone you don't find attractive, no problem, that's to you. But don't make that the standard. Don't say that because I'm not attracted to this person, this is what beauty is not. Or this is what being ugly means. It doesn't mean that. It just means it's not yours. Look, go where else. This person is a princess to someone else. And the list goes on. So Ibn al-Qayyim here, rahimahullah, he is mentioning that these people who get afflicted by ayn and jinn and shayateen are people who put themselves out there. They put themselves out there and so when they put themselves out there, the shaytan, he utilizes this, this opportunity. The person doesn't remember Allah. She comes online, she puts her aura there, her legs, her arms, her face, her yani, body parts. She puts it out in the open for people to see. And people are looking, they're scrolling, looking at her pictures. First of all, it's Muharram. Thani and the evil eye that she has accumulated from all of that. Thali then the lie that she has portrayed to us. She's made it look like this is who she is. That's not really necessarily the case. It was a good day where you got certain clothes, you probably sometimes borrowed, sometimes rented for that per certain day. You give that perfect. You go to a certain restaurant for that day, may not even be your own dish that you're eating. You take a picture of it and you put it online. Why are you fooling your young sisters? Why are you fooling your other sisters in making it look like this is your lifestyle? When it's not really your lifestyle. You live with your mom, you don't pay rent, but brother gives it oppression, he's driving this wonderful car. The brother's given this false يعني, idea that he's يعني, a businessman, running finances, all of it. But he just lives in his mother's basement, doesn't pay rent. So these are things we need to really understand, brothers and sisters. What you're seeing online is, uh, it's a mirage. It's a lie, it's deception. You're being deceived. And you're falling for it every time. And those people, they don't live that life. They, they get paid to make you feel that that's the life they live. Okay? Their picture has been you, yani looked at, checked, verified, if it has any deficiency. And after that, it's then put online for you. There were so many retakes of that same picture that you saw that you thought, wow, I want to be like that. Angles were checked. Parts of the, everything was, was checked. Are you there? That same sister, well, by trying to fool the people, fool the people forever, starts to live a depressed life. You know why? She can't come out anymore and sit with the society and the community. Do you know why she can't do that? Because they, they have a certain idea of her looks and the way she looks. So when she comes out and she sits with people, she knows that she's going to be judged because people have a high expectation of her looks. So she's, see, she's, she's, she's been quarantining before COVID-19. And even after COVID-19, she'll be quarantining. She lives alone, she's biased, she's depressed. Okay? And 
Because who can live that standard of perfection every day? They can't. Sometimes you just want to wake up and not comb your hair and just walk out. And sometimes you just want to yeah, and you wear the most simpler stuff for your clothing. And, but you know you can't in this situation. So Ibn al-Qayyim, he says, وَهِيَ فِي أَسْرِهَا وَقَبْضَتِهَا تَسُوقُهَا حَيْتُ شَعْتِ وَلَا يُمْكِنُ وَنَا يُمْتِنَعُ عَنْهَا وَلَا مُخَالَفَتِهَا وَبِهَا الصَّرْعُ الْعَظَمُ الَّذِي لَا يُفِيقُ صَاحِبُهُ إِلَّا عِنْدَ الْمُفَارَقَةِ وَالْمُعَايَنَةِ فَهُنَاكَ يَتَحَقَّقُ أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمَسْرُوعِ حَقِيقَةً وَبِاللَّهِ الْمُسْتَعَانَ That's the case for many of us. The remembrance of Allah and everything goes. If Allah wants good for you brothers and sisters, Allah wakes you up subhanahu wa ta'ala from all of that. The world that we live in today brothers and sisters, we have to be strangers, literal strangers. You have to be a person who the world, what it has set, you question everything. You can survive like that. Yani what's been set up for, for the people, you have to be like this, you have to be, act like this, you have to be like this. That social media has, has portrayed, you have to push that aside. A standard should not be what's set, set for you. Be a person who Allah and His Messenger, what they set is where, you, where you're working towards. Because when you're working towards what Allah and His Messenger set, your heart will find طُمَأْنِينَ أَلَىٰ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Like in this one, when you run after it, stress, depression, anxiety, everything comes to you. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا لَا رَجُونَ And who are you really doing it for? Honey, who are you doing it for? Are you really doing it for yourself? Or is it a peer pressure? I'm not saying <clears throat> all of the women who do that are doing it for men. And I'm not saying all the men that do it are necessarily doing it for women. I'm not saying everyone is. Even though the high percentage are doing it for the opposite gender. That being said, like in, what I'm saying is that even if you believe you're doing it for yourself, are you not doing it because of peer pressure? Do you think other people have set for you the way you should be and not because of something you came up with and you feel confident with and happy ha think about it today how many things have you actually chosen for yourself and it wasn't chosen for you because of social media that's a very important question we should ask ourselves how many things are we doing today m because of the fact that we saw it on social media and it made us do it and we took it and we incorporated it from other people's lives if it's something good and religious, and, and of course, labat, khair, we take from one another. And if it is something that even worldly, but it's beneficial in our world, and it's, not, it's a beneficial worldly thing, that no problem, of course. We can take that from one another. But unnecessary stuff. Things that don't benefit us, that we've taken from other people. How many things? A lot of things, right? Wallahi, it's not civilization to look like that, brothers and sisters. It's not. You're not actually يعني, going ahead in life. and You're not progressing. Fear Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Surrender yourself to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And know that one day, this body that you're, you're shining and you're placing all of these يعني, makeup on it and you're smacking this onto it and this other layer and this other layer and this other layer. Remember one day the earth is going to swallow it. It's going to eat, be eaten by the earth. And your body is going to turn into dust. And it's not going to remain forever. Don't disobey Allah wa ta'ala for this short period of time that you stay in this world. This short period of time that you're going to stay in this world, don't disobey Allah wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bimannihi wa karamihi, I ask Allah from the bottom of my heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings us back to our religion. He makes us fear Him. He makes us conscious of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I also ask Allah wa ta'ala that He forgives us for our private and our public sins. And I ask Allah that He protects our women for us. Women are a very powerful, strong part of the community. And if we lose our women, our society will crumble. We need you sisters to help us strengthen the community. We need you. You are the mother, you are the mothers of the community. You are the daughters of the community. And anyone who knows their, the, the, the value of their mother, 
and also knows the value of a wife and the value of a daughter will realize the importance of a woman. Your mother is the one who raised you and nurtured you, how important she is in your life. A wife, the way she fulfills your needs in this world and takes care of you. Your daughter, if you've got sons and your daughter, you always know the difference. The daughters are the most arham, most merciful, caring. I would never want to be in a society and I would never want to be in a place where there is no women playing a role in that society's progression and its way forward. So sisters, it's not us against you or you against us. This is not a battle between men and women. It's not a gender war. It's we need each other. We are on the same team. And in order to overcome the obstacles and the adversaries that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, we need one another. We should work together rather than working against one another. We should support one another rather than uh, critiquing and yani, insulting and belittling one another. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allah wa bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. So I think I'm going to have to take some of your questions, inshallah ta'ala. Hey, any questions? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I would like to know is depression a sign of weak iman? Not necessarily, no. Not necessarily, no. But entertaining depression could be an effect of weak iman. And a person, if he, yani, he can be sad by an event that took place in his life, he can be sad, as Allah mentioned to us about the Prophet. Allah told us in the Quran, We know what they are saying to you is tightening your chest. Yeah, and it's making you feel sad what they are saying to you. So yes, without a doubt, what people say to us does affect us. No one is going to lie and say, what people say doesn't affect me. It affects you, of course it affects you. Especially if they are close family members, close friends. Of course they affect you. And they cause it causes you sadness. And it can also cause you depression. But that being, speech, that being said, a lot of the times, a lot of the times, I can't say always, but a lot of the times, depression is connected to weak iman. Because the reason is because the person who is, yeah, and he goes through hardship, because of his strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his conviction of Allah, whatever hardship he goes through, it, he can always come out of it by remembering Allah. And it doesn't, the pain just stays outside and what goes in doesn't necessarily become a lot. For example, if a, a boat is on a very strong wind in the ocean, as long as that water doesn't go into the ship, the ship won't sink. That water goes into the sink, uh, into the ship or onto the ship, then the ship will sink. So as long as you try your best to keep your problems out and it doesn't get to your mind and heart, then inshallah ta'ala it won't. And if you have Allah in your life, then depression isn't easy for it to happen to you. It isn't easy. No. Okay, if a woman does not have a mahram and she wants to seek knowledge, what happens? I'm sure the person can start seeking knowledge in her local area. In her area, she doesn't have to travel straight away. 
she can seek knowledge in her locality. Aynam. Okay, so now Malik al Does a father have right to use his daughter's salary according to his own plans and not let her use any of it? Does the father have um, does a father have rights to use his daughter's salary according to his own plans and not let her use any of it? As a tricky one in the sense where it's not a good thing without a doubt that a father takes away the wealth of his daughter. It's not a good thing. Um, because what it does, and I've seen it happen a lot of the times, is that when that child starts to make money, if he doesn't see his money growing, that child a lot of the times stops working. He just stops working because he believes that, what's the point of working? I'm not going to keep my money anyways. So that's, it's, it's, it's not productive in doing that. But there is a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said, Anta wa maluka li abuk. The Prophet said to the man, you and your wealth is owned by your father. So the child has to understand that you wouldn't have been in this world if it wasn't for your parents. And the Prophet did say to that person, that the Sahabi, that you and your wealth is owned by your father. And I know, I, told, I, I, I personally understand that your parents, yani, the relationship a child has when he grows older can sometimes be tricky. Some parents are hard to understand the way that they are towards their children. Very complicated. Very complicated. They just want to take the money and take it and take it and take it. And sometimes they have little empathy towards the child. But my, my yani, yani, argument here is Allah alam for how long your parents are going to live in this world, so just make them happy whilst they're in this world. To just attain your place in Jannah, inshaAllah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please, what are the rights of a husband upon a wife that can earn the, wo earn the woman Jannah? I didn't get that question. Assalamu alaikum. Can a woman travel alone to visit her family in the same country, just different states, as it is difficult for a mahram to come with? So, uh, if it's different states, would that be considered traveling? Like, in? like would it be considered traveling? Yeah. Would it necessarily be considered traveling? If it's considered traveling, then she can't travel without a mahram. No. She should try to have her husband and her travel together for her family. Jazakallah khairan for that beautiful reminder, Sheikh. Those of us in the West are absolutely struggling to hold on to ourselves, our iman and religion. Such a reminder was much needed, alhamdulillah. Amen. What should a sister do when her father and aunt are pr pressuring her to marry her cousin, but age doesn't see him to be a religious, but she doesn't see him to be a religious man? No woman has, has to be forced into marriage. And I always say this to the sisters, if your parents force you to get married, don't listen. Don't listen. If your parents force you to get married, you don't listen. You don't have to listen. Take their suggestion, take what they say on board, but don't listen if you think this is not the right person for you. Ha. The reason is because it becomes detrimental uh, uh, if you marry someone you don't like, somebody you're repulsed to. It could harm you. Okay, it could what? It could harm you and your future. So just kindly and gently tell your parents that this is not something you want to pursue and you want to do. Ha. If they want to marry, don't marry. That's your choice. That's your rights. That's you. And the parents, we should just present the idea to the daughter. We have Fulan, Ibn Fulan ready. Do you want to get married to him or not? That's it. But to force that onto the daughter is not. And the same with the brothers. 
uh, boys sometimes get pressured into marriage as well and that's not also something he should have to do as well Ustad, is there a time do you think where the ummah will become stronger especially looking at this day and age and is there even hope anymore yes wallahi there is hope brothers and sisters i know when we sometimes talk about these topics sometimes it gives the impression that that's it khalas the ummah is finished finished over and the prophet said in a hadith man qala ahlaka an-nas fa huwa ahlakuhum the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said anyone who says that the people are destroyed all of them he's the most destroyed person if anyone who says the ummah is wretched he's the most, most wretched of individuals the ummah wallahi there's a lot of khair in this ummah wallahi there are a lot of sisters there are a lot of sisters that social media doesn't show you huwa muhajjab munaqqaba covered fully covered also covered from evil in their hearts not just outside inside they are different righteous women salihat qanitat there are women like that wallah ahlul khair mawjood there are women better than a thousand men out there who are righteous who are studying who are learning ay naam social media doesn't show those people because they don't go to social media they're not they are not they're present allahumma barik and the khair is present in this ummah there are huffaz women who have memorized the quran there are islamic scholar female scholars who have attained a deep understanding of the deen i've encountered many of those sisters who are really righteous and noble and they amaze you in their righteousness they you know they're present so when we say when we when we speak about these stuff online that's just a, a part of society that we're seeing but it's not everybody it's not everybody <sighs> assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh if the woman already re- repented from her past career as a model will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still punish her for the pictures that were still on the internet no no allah will not punish you for it if you have repented if you were in the worst of industries and you've repented allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your repentance any woman who did those things and she repented allah will accept her repentance repentance is open for everybody allah will um was that is it realistic for a sister to manage a career and household it's, it is realistic yeah it is realistic but it's dependent on the environment that she's in in certain places no but in other places yes is the land the western countries or is it a muslim country because remember brothers and sisters if the parents sometimes have to leave the house okay have to leave the house the mother has to do yani work and make money but the children are in an islamic environment the environment helps nurture your children in the right direction you know but if you're in an environment that whenever you turn your eye away from your child that's it there's a there's vultures waiting for them these hyenas and predators waiting for your children to take them and infiltrate you and yeah and it cause problem in your house and and cause fit then no you can't you cannot balance between a career and also being a household parent so it's all dependent on the environment that you're in ustad would you recommend getting married from a younger age as the fitna is severe from living in the west yes i do i do encourage the youngsters and the youths to get married very very quickly I encourage sisters to get married very young and I of course encourage brothers to get married very very young because as the prophet said ya ma'ashar ash-shabab man istata'a minkum al-ba'at falyatazawwaj the prophet said marry oh youngsters youths get married wa man lam yastati' and whoever is not able to fa'alihi bisawmi bi fast fasting so marry young the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he told us yani fa inna aghdhu lil-basari wa ahsanu lil-farji that he protects your private parts and you lower your gaze and your desires are fulfilled and that's it 
اي نعم استاذ ودي استاذ can i advise a friend who wants to have children but her husband doesn't want to how can i advise a friend who wants to have children but her husband doesn't want to يعني a wife should want to have, a husband and a wife should want to have children they should want to have a children as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in a hadith tazawwaju al-wadud al-walud fa inni mukathirun bikum al-umam yawm al-qiyamah marry the woman who's very loving there are women who are very loving it's a good trait by the way where in this society that we live in we people make it, they look down at a woman who loves her husband a lot the prophet said to us marry a woman who's like that tazawwaju al-wadud a woman who wants to, she she works hard to making her husband love her and a woman who loves her husband she gives him a lot of attention she showers him with love we're in a society and a time where that's really looked down at and it's like insult we insult the woman for being like that that's not the second quality that the prophet mentioned here alayhi salatu wasallam is the woman who wants to have a lot of children marry her so also the, the, the prophet mentioned in the last portion of the hadith fa inni mukathirun bikum wa umam fa inni mukathirun bikum al umam yawm al qiyamah okay because i want to increase uh, in the number of the umma yawm al qiyamah so a husband as soon as he gets married to his wife should try to work to have children because we're like brothers and sisters what brings you close to this person and brings you closer to the individual is to have children so try to have children inshallah ta'ala and don't deprive your wife from it because her asking to have children with you is a sign that she loves you she what she's she wants to have children for you okay so don't take that away from her and saying look i want to also have children for you and i mean so i want i want to have children with you so bring that for her now Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh What is the correct hijab for a woman That's a very good question Let me mention the shurut of a hijab It's a very good per- yani conditions of hijab Yani Sheikh Al-Albani rahimahullah he mentions this in his kitab Jilbab al-Mar'at al-Muslima He mentions the conditions for a woman a hijab. So these are the conditions. If these conditions are met, this is a hijab. If it doesn't meet these conditions, it is not a hijab. The first one is an yakuna satira li badaniha kulla. It covers the whole entire body. That's number one. The second one is an yakuna fadfadan. It has to be big. Yeah, it has to be something big. Yani wasi'an. It has to be big. Okay? Wide. It can't stick to her body. No, no, no. So it shows her bones and her thighs and her hip and her... No, that's not a hijab. Third, third condition is أَنْ يَكُونَ ثَقِيلًا It also has to be thick. It can't be soft where it sticks to her body a lot. Some hijabs are silky. That's not good. A hijab has to be a bit thick. That it's if it t- presses on her body... Uh, it doesn't show really what's underneath it. It can't stick. Okay. The fourth one is Allah yakuna libas shuhra. It can't be libas considered libas shuhra. Yani clothing that catches people's attention. She's wearing a, a color where the people look at her and say, "Oh, what's that? What's that?" No, you're not allowed to have that. Allah yakuna muataran. She can't place perfume on it or bukhur or something like that. لا يكون مزينا it can't be something beautiful the, some sisters today they the hijabs that they wear is beautiful so it attracts people the concept of hijab is to not attract people it's just to hide her from the people the next condition is لا يشبه لباس الكافرات it can't resemble the clothing of the disbelievers لا يشبه لباس الرجال it can't be men's clothing so a woman can't wear a hijab made out of jeans for example لا يكون عليه رسم it can't also have pictures of a soul on it okay those are the conditions of a hijab yeah. assalamu alaikum if a husband is trying to is lying to his wife to see his second wife as the first wife does not know the matter what would you advise please any man who goes and 
gets married to a second wife when he has a first wife is really not ready to go into polygamy. Any man who's hiding the second wife from the first wife shouldn't actually be going forward to get married. Because marrying more than one wife requires a person who is strong, a man who is honest, direct, a man who is real about it, who's not hiding anything. If you're hiding something, it means you're scared. And if you're scared, it means that you're not up to the responsibility that is required from you. So maybe you're not the right person to get married. Okay? You're not the right person to get married. And I wouldn't encourage, personally, for anyone to go for uh, polygamy at this current time that we're, we're living in. To look after your first family and your first wife and your children, okay, is more important, brothers and sisters, than to think about bringing someone else on board. You have a child, you have a wife, you have children, you, you try to take care of that before you try to bring someone else on board who will يعني, be a cause of maybe losing your children and what you currently have. And it's, it's like a person who sees gold and is carrying gold. So he sees a Gold over there, he drops what he has in order to go get what those gold. When he goes there, he could be stopped from having those gold, so when he comes back, he has no gold anymore. So you may not get that and no, no, no, or, or lose what you currently have. No. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can a boy's mother okay, force a Riva Muslima to involve her parents for marriage when she does not feel comfortable involving them for matrimony purposes? Hey, no, she can. If her sister's a revert and she doesn't want to inform her family, she doesn't want to inform her family. Yani if her family, father and mother are not Muslims, she doesn't have to involve them, no. Because yani, it's her choice. If she wants to involve them, she can if she doesn't want to. She, she, it's not a must that she gets forced into it. Ustad, in some, of, some other countries, black color hijab attracts unwanted attention. So can a woman wear another dark color like gray or brown? No. Yani the color changes from one place to another. It doesn't have to be black, by the way. For example, in Indonesia, countries like that, wearing white for women is actually not a problem. It's not attractive. It's just a standard clothing. So of course, that's not a problem. But if you wore that black, so with that color, maybe in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Khalij, uh, maybe they, they, they, they, they will catch attention. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. When the wind blows on a sister wearing a, a, a, the full hijab, does it become a sin on her as it shows her figure? No, it's not. If the hijab blows onto you uh, unintentionally and it shows parts of your body, that's what the ayah meant, إِلَّا مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا Except that which becomes apparent. All that the woman should try to do is try to force the wind not to show her body parts. But no, she's not going to be sinning. Because that's not what she's done intentionally. Ustad, what is the wisdom behind the Prophet's many wives? Yani, a lot of us, men especially, it's like the only thing that we've understood from the religion uh, is the concept of polygamy. We might not pray salah on time. We might not even pray salah in jama'ah. We may not even fulfill the other obligation act in our religion. And the first thing that we jump on is the concept of polygamy. That's it. As soon as the brother starts practicing, this is the first thing he would want to try out first. Uh, you see people reverting to Islam and sometimes saying, yes, mashallah, alhamdulillah, one of the things that attracted me to Islam is I can marry multiple wives. Now, this is something that's not, 
uh, it's not a true understanding of what Islam is, brothers and sisters. It's not a true understanding of what the religion is. Yani, and you have to understand the responsibilities that come with it. Yom al-Qiyamah, the things that you're going to be asked. It's not a light situation, honestly. And a lot of people make it seem like it's a very easy thing to do. It's a very hard yani, commitment to get yourself into marrying multiple wives. My honest advice to any brother who comes to me and asks me for advice to marry, I always tell him it's best not to. Just stick to your wife and fulfill yani, the rights of your current wife. And take care of your children. Because to step out of that and to go into another realm of marrying another wife, it's really you putting yourself out there for yani, questions Yom Al-Qiyamah. Why did you do this? Why did you say this? Why did you act in this way? Why did you not fulfill this rights? This, this, this, this. Yani, there's already so many shortcomings that we have that we have to answer to Yom Al-Qiyamah. Adding on to your scale, Yom Al-Qiyamah, that you have to fulfill this woman's rights. And you have to give her this. And you have to... Yani, the rights of women, brothers and sisters, is not just financial. So, <coughs> many of us men can't fulfill the first wife's... Uh, the, the attention that she wants from us. The appreciation that she wants from us. And the... Uh, uh, yani, what was the three A's? Appreciation, attention and affection. We're struggling with the first one. Whenever she demands for time and quality time, we're, sh we're falling short on that. And then the second wife comes and she starts for asking for more time. She wants, she wants time and she wants attention and affection and, and all of that. Yeah, and it's part of what you need to do. And then if you don't give that, the woman, it's like she dehydrates. Just like if you don't drink enough water, she dehydrates. And this causes her problems. And then once it causes problems, it causes you problems because they become to you like they're nagging you. And once they start becoming like they're nagging you, you're no longer able to stay in the relationship. And then it crumbles down and the problem goes on. So this is a, uh, it's the advice I give. And it's really hard. It's rare situations I've seen where I personally would say to a brother, yes, go marry a second wife. But that's very, very rare. And I know this might cause a controversial yani, heat to so many people, but a lot of people actually believe yani, polygamy is sunnah. They believe it's sunnah. Yani, marrying multiple wives is sunnah. And that's not the case. Marrying multiple wives is not sunnah. Not necessarily, no. It's not. Marrying multiple wives is not sunnah. Let alone it being wajib. Okay? Uh, but what is wajib? for sure, is to take care of your current wife and your children. And a lot of these brothers who go into polygamy, their children, they're not providing for them. They're not taking, the, they're not taking care of their, their current wife's financial needs. They are not taking care of their children's needs. They are not taking care of their wife's need. Okay, and they're going for the second, third, and fourth. So you have to question yourself, Yom Al-Qiyamah, what are you... Yeah, and Yom Al-Qiyamah has to be very big in your heart. Okay, Yom Al Qiyamah has to be very big in your heart. And what are you going to say to Allah Yom Al Qiyamah when this person drags you by the collar and says, Ya Rabbi, look, he took the responsibility and he did all of this to me. So we ask Allah to forgive us for our shortcomings, for sure. We're falling short in many aspects in the religion. And I'm giving a sincere advice. I'm not trying to yeah, any please the sisters. And I'm not in no way, shape, or form trying to please the brothers. I'm just giving you a sincere an answer that I know. Uh, also, I would not definitely advise someone in the West to do it because of the format and the reality over there. Because imagine you lose both families, you lose your children, and they go into the hands of the, uh, of the authorities and, you know, issues happen. Uh, my advice to you all is sincerely stick with Tawheed. Tawheed, what does Come with Tawheed. Tawheed is only one, right? Ha, just stick to that one. Take care and look after them, inshallah. Ta'ala, yeah? The way Tawheed is important in every other thing, it can be come with Tawheed in that one as well, inshallah. Ta'ala.
a revert has a dog at home and it and it and is practicing Islam in secret. It's difficult to remain pure. She stays all over the room if her saliva goes on the sofa and it is and it is on it later, will I become impure? No. You shouldn't have the dog first of all in the house. A, a person can have a dog, but try not to bring the dog into the house. Keep the dog outside. You're allowed to have a dog, but keep the dog outside. It doesn't have to be inside the house. Because the Prophet always the angels do not enter a house, there is a dog or a picture in it. The, the second thing is the saliva you have to be very careful with. Uh, is marrying more than one wife sunnah or something that was practiced among the people in the past where men were marrying many wives but Islam came to limit it to four يعني, marrying multiple wives يعني, at the time of the Prophet وسلم, the Sahabas practiced it, no doubt there are many factors that we need to take into on board the environment that the Sahabas lived in the type of people they were the type of wives they had a lot of those factors, if you take it out of that and you do it straight away yourself, it's very detrimental. Yani the Sahabas, they were in a society were righteous that would help them raise their children properly. That's one. They were fair men, let's be honest. Abu Bakr was a righteous, fair man. Umar was the same, Uthman and Ali and all of these men were very righteous people. They were fair. They were Ahlul Khayr, Ahlul Khashya. We lack that quality, let's be honest, we do. Uh, their wives were also women who were jealous, no doubt. This is a this is something that's common. It was jealousy of women is always there. But they're different to the women that we're dealing with today. Yeah, I need the woman at that time, if they had her and her husband had a conflict, Islam would still govern it and etc. This one, when you guys have a conflict, secret services involved, authorities involved, yeah, uh, big problems explode from it. Araftum? So brothers, we have to take all of that in, into consideration. Uh, if my own mom wants to travel to a haram place, even though I wanted her, uh, even, uh, even though I warned her against it, but she still wants to travel, should I accompany her or let her go on her own? Don't accompany her and advise her as much as you can not to go. And if she goes, that is upon her. Uh, how do you advise Muslim Muslims from the West looking to migrate to a Muslim country? Should we do so even if it means a lower lifestyle you are accustomed to? Yes. Yani going to a Muslim country today, there is many good Muslim countries you can go to. You can go to Gambia. Very good. Gambia is very good, mashallah. Allah mabarik. There's khair going in Gambia. A lot of good is happening in Gambia. There's a yani, Marrakis Islamiya, there's a good da'wah going in Gambia. There's a nice da'wah happening in Somaliland. There is a nice da'wah going in Somalia. There is a nice da'wah going happening in uh, Saudi Arabia. There's khair happening in Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's many places in the world. It's, traveling to a Muslim country is not just Saudi Arabia or this country or this country. No, it's not. There's many places you can travel to, brothers and sisters. Malaysia. Indonesia, you, Turkey, Hadith wala haraj. So, even if it means that your lifestyle, you lower your lifestyle, that you, you, you lower your lifestyle, uh, then you, what you are you're personally accustomed to, no doubt. For your religion, of course. And inshallah ta'ala, what Allah will give you will be better. I'm a revert, I live with my family who are Hindu. Sometimes when my mum knocks the door while praying, will my prayer be invalid if I answer it between, as I don't previously to repeat my prayer. I'm a revert, I live with my family who are Hindu, okay? Sometimes when my mum knocks the door while praying, will my prayer be invalid if I answer it in between, as I don't get previously. Now the Prophet ﷺ used to respond to the door and he would open it وسلم, even if he was praying. Now you can. Um, and please talk about 
Hurul Ain, inshallah ta'ala. One time we will talk about it. May Allah first of all take us to Jannah and then we can meet them being Nila and Kareem. Okay, I think that's all the questions that people. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. If a person prays Jumrah, do they have to pray Dhuhr even if they have enough time to pray before Imam comes? If a person, if a person prays Jumrah, do they have to pray Dhuhr? I don't get that question. If they pray Jumrah, why would they want to pray Dhuhr for? I don't understand that. Can a woman apply makeup and go outside? No. If a woman wears, puts makeup and she can't go outside. Even those who believe that the face is not aura, yani the woman can show her face. The scholars who believe that, okay, they don't allow the woman to wear, they may, you're not allowed to beautify yourself and go out. Unless the woman's going to wear niqab. If, unless you're going to wear niqab and you cover your face, no problem. You can put makeup on then. But if you're going to show your face, then no, you're not allowed to f put makeup on. I asked if a sister is allowed to send her video to her parents without hijab on. She can. You can send your videos to your parents without hijab on. Enough. Ustad, if my parents do not want me to go overseas to seek knowledge, can I go against their will? They don't want me to do any studying, even here, really. They think I am extreme. Number one, if the knowledge that you're seeking is obligatory knowledge, it's knowledge where I don't know how to pray, so I need to learn how to pray. And okay, and there's no other way you can learn that knowledge unless you travel. Yeah, and if that knowledge is ilm, which is daruri, you necessary knowledge, then you can't you, you go and seek that knowledge, even if they don't allow you. But if it's just extra knowledge, you want to learn hadith, you want to learn fiqh, and you want to learn usulul fiqh, and you want to go deep into other sciences that are not necessarily a obligatory knowledge, then no, you have to listen to your parents. Okay. Ustad, can a woman tuck her hijab in her shirt uh, as a nurse? It's best that she doesn't. Are the wives in general the wives of the of the of this world? Yani, if you mean if a wife, if a husband's married to a wife and he makes it to Jannah, would she be his wife in Jannah? Yes. Uh, my family won't buy me a jilbab, nor will they let me wear it. What should I do, especially with my niqab? I think sisters should try to get your information and buy you a jilbab to wear. Um, Insha'Allah ta'ala, sisters should buy it for you. If a spouse is being mistreated, is it okay for them to pray not to have the same partner in Jannah? Hmm. I don't know the answer to that question. Last art question, inshallah ta'ala. How should I encourage my sister? How should I encourage my sister to observe the hijab when her, partner, her parents do not enforce it on her? And the sister says things like, you're not my mum, so don't tell me what to wear and what not to wear. Just advise her. Advising is what you have. You don't have to enforce it on her. All you can do is just advise her. But that kid for in the Okay. Um, Ustad, can a woman tuck her hijab in her shirt as a nurse? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to that question.